وإذا تجلى سره في عبده ملك الدروب وإذا تجلى سره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إخواني وأخواتي مشاهدين الكرام أحييكم بالتحية الإسلام تحية الرسل الكرام فأقول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم إلى حلقة جديدة في دروس في اللغة العربية أنا مضيفكم محمد مناف محمد I begin in the name of Almighty God, the most gracious, the most merciful I greet you my beloved brothers and sisters with the greeting of Islam, the greetings of all the prophets and that is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you Welcome brothers and sisters, welcome my dear viewers to a new episode of Durusun fi Lughat al Arabiya Lessons in Arabic As you would have seen previously for the past three sessions or so we have started with a new series of Durusun fi Lughat al Arabiya <coughs> And today, inshallah, we are going to continue. In the previous episode, we were looking at the perfect tense conjugation. And we also had the conversation reinforcing the conjugation of the perfect tense. And today, inshallah, we are going to look at the conjugation of the imperfect tense. But uh, before we go on to that, I would like to let you know that all of these programs uh, can be viewed at the various stations on channels uh, 10, Green Dot, and channel 7, and Flow, that is Gael, and also live streaming on the internet at the islamicnetwork.org. All of these uh, places you can see um, our programs, inshallah. And if perchance you may have missed any one of our programs, you can always go back on YouTube, type in um, Sheikh Munaf Muhammad, inshallah, and you'll be able to get all of the previous um, lessons if perchance you have missed any one of the programs. Also, we would like to say that we also have a page on Facebook and uh, any one of the lessons that you would have seen and you have maybe some questions that you would like to ask, then you are free to post up your questions, inshallah, and we will try to address those questions in later episodes. So I say to you, Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome to our program, inshallah. I hope that now <coughs> you will try to get your pens and your paper and so on. I'll give you a moment or so. And we're going to short break, inshallah. When I come back, we are going to start with the conjugation of the imperfect tense. <laughs> Got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle? Then worry no more. Visit Eric Allianz on Automotive and Transport Services Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. They do full professional body works using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Allianz on Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. Or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's Restaurant Minimart and Poultry Depot. Conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street on Southern Main Road, California. At Maddie's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays. We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products, including halal chicken and duck. Open hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Maddie's Restaurant Minimart and Poultry Depot at 744-1857. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Welcome brothers and sisters as we continue with Durusun Fil Lughatil Arabiya Lessons in Arabic Today inshallah we are going to look at the conjugation of the imperfect tense verb Now the imperfect tense verb relates to basically three things And they are the present continuous tense, the simple present tense and the future tense so, as we are talking about the imperfect tense, first of all, we want to understand what it is that we mean by the imperfect tense um, verb. <clears throat> the perfect tense is the one that we have already talked about in the previous session. And the perfect tense is talking about the verb that has already been perfected. So, it's the past tense. So, basically, we are talking about the present tense. But in Arabic or in the Actually, in the grammatical terms, we say the imperfect tense because the imperfect tense refers to these um, three main uh, tenses. So I'm going to write this now, um, what I mean by imperfect tense, a little um, diagram here. The imperfect tense. In Arabic, it is called al-fi'l. Al Mudari' Al Fi'lul Mudari'i. Sorry, Al Mudari'u. <coughs> al Fi'lul Mudari'u refers to the imperfect tense. And this basically refers to three things. One is it refers to the simple present tense and it also refers to the present continuous tense and the future tense. Okay. So basically, three headings come under al fi'l al mudari' or the imperfect tense. So, what we want to, to look at basically is that we want to, first of all, um, relay this that when we talk about al fi'l al mudari' we are actually talking about these three elements. The simple present tense, the present continuous tense, and the future tense. Because the conjugation of the verb could refer to any one of them. It is the same conjugation. The only thing is that it could be interpreted as this one, or as this one, as an, or as this one. Likewise, <clears throat> we would like to, to let you know that there are certain words if you see these words in their sentence, then these words will help us to differentiate when it is a simple present tense, when it is, refers to the present continuous tense, and also their future tense. So there are some key words that will help us to distinguish between this one and this one and that one. Okay? So those words will be, for the simple present tense, we'll have words like kulla. <coughs> So we have words like, this is a letter, kaf, lam, kulla, kulla means every, and you have yawm, kulla yawm means every day. Okay, and then 
for the word yom, <coughs> you could change the word for other words. Maybe you can use the word usbu'a, which means week. Right? Usbu'a means every week. Kullu usbu'a. Or you could use kullu shahar every month, or you could say kullu sana, uh, kullu sa'a, every hour, all right? So if you have the conjugation and you use this, this term here, it will identify it and confine it to the simple present tense because of the word kull, every. So like for example in English we say I go to school every day, or you could say I go to school every week. All right? Or I visit my friend every month, or I travel every year. So you're using the simple present tense, okay? Um, I go, all right? Or he, he goes, okay? He goes to the masjid every day, all right? He goes. Um, whereas in the present continuous tense, as the word itself says, continuous, it shows continuity in the verb. So it has the ing. So okay, he is going to school now. So one of the words that will help us to distinguish the simple present tense from the present continuous is this one. And this one, what is going to distinguish or identify this tense, the present continuous, is the word al-an. Al-an basically means now. al Anna means now. All right? So I'm writing now. He is going now. All right? Okay? So if I say he is going now, all right, it means it is present continuous. But the word going, going, all right, and goes here, for the Arabic, the conjugation is the same thing. There is no difference between going and go, all right? The conjugation is one. Likewise, for the future, the future tense also is the same conjugation, excepting that you have two words could confine the meaning to the future tense. One is the word <coughs> sofa. Sofa. If you put the word sofa before the conjugation of the verb, then it would mean future tense. And if you don't want to use the word sofa, you can use the letter sin, sa. And this sin is attached to the verb. So we say attach. All right, the sin is attached to the verb. To verb. This one is written by itself, saufa. So basically, <coughs> if we want to identify one from the next, or we want to distinguish one from the other one, we will have these words. These are helping words that will help us to recognize which is which. When we look at the Arabic, so let's say, for example, we are looking at the conjugation of the verb zahaba, and we have yevhabu. Yadhabu. All right? So, Yadhabu could mean simple present tense would mean what? Go or goes. Okay? That's, that's this. And if it is present continuous, the same word Yadhab would mean going. And here, will go. So it's the same word, okay? This one goes here, all right? So this is future tense because of the word will. So will basically is the word sofa or the scene. Going al-an means now. And go or goes, these are the helping word. But look here, yazhab. Yazhab could mean any one of those things, all right? All right? So basically, when we're talking about the imperfect tense, this is what we are, re we are referring to. For the imperfect tense, 
which could mean any one of this. And it is showing us that the verb has not been perfected yet. The action has not yet been uh, perfected. All right? So the imperfect tense is, of course, different from the perfect tense because the perfect tense, it shows that the action has already been perfected. It is finished. And today, we, inshallah, we would look at the conjugation of the imperfect tense, but we are not going to look at the whole conjugation of the imperfect tense verb. And the reason for that is because the imperfect tense um, conjugation has, uh, some of the conjugation has prefix, and then you may have some of the, some parts of it, you will have a prefix and you will also have um, a suffix. So you have more letters being added. It's all dependent on which one of the pronouns that you, uh, that we are talking about. So because of the extra work that you would see in the conjugation of the imperfect tense verb, we will not be doing the whole or the full conjugation of the imperfect tense verb. We would just probably look at the singular column, all right? And the singular column basically has the third person and the second person and the first person. Of course, for both of them you have, or for the three of them you have the masculine and you also have the feminine. All right, so that is what inshallah we'll be looking at for with regards to the imperfect tense um, verb. All right, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to take a short break inshallah and um, I would just like to let you know that um, when we come back we will be looking at our Quranic uh, vocabulary uh, for today. You would uh, probably recall that we started out with um, Suratul Fatiha and Suratul Fatiha is a surah that we all recite um, so many times for the day and uh, all of us we should really try to know what we are saying and therefore it is important for us to learn not only to memorize the Arabic, um, the surah itself, but also to actually try to understand what each word of Surah Al-Fatiha, what it means. All right, so when we say Alhamdu, we know what it means in our English language. Lillahi, Rabb, what is the meaning of Rabb, what is the meaning of Al-Alameen. All right, so we have already looked at the first part of Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the first half, and today, inshallah, we'll be looking at the second half of uh, Surah Al-Fatiha and of course we, we try to look at the occurrence of uh, each word uh, how many times that these words have occurred in the glorious Quran that is of course to help you the viewer and the listener to be able to to memorize these words inshallah and if you see these words in other parts of the Quran you will also know the meanings of these uh, words all right, so you don't want to know the word in Surah Al-Fatiha, and if you see the same word um, in the next part of the Quran, you don't know what it is. No, we don't want it to be like that. It's like just you're seeing uh, someone who you know, but perhaps you probably see the person, let's say, for example, in the masjid, and you're seeing the same person maybe in the mall, and you say, no, I don't know who is this person. No, we don't want it to be like that. So with the words also, if you see the word in Surah Al-Fatiha, you would also recognize the same word in other parts of the glorious Quran, right? So we're going to take a short break, inshallah, and when we come back, we are going to go straight into our vocab vocabulary um, for today, inshallah. Uh -huh. Got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle? Then worry no more. Visit Eric Alliance on Automotive and Transport Services Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. They do full professional bodyworks using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Alliance on Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town, or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's Restaurant Minimart and Poultry Depot Conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street on Southern Main Road, California At Mali's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products including halal chicken and duck Open hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Maddie's Restaurant, Minimat and Poultry Depot at 744-1857. 
Each day we are reminded, and each day we say, there's not much that we can do. It seems so far away. So we live our lives in silence, pretending not to hear the voices of our people. The cry is so so clear. Assalamu alaikum, ahlan wa sahlan, brothers and sisters. Today, inshallah, we are going to look at the remaining part of Surah Al Fatiha. We have already looked at the first half of Surah Al Fatiha, and we are going to look at the second half of Surah Al Fatiha. All of the words of Surah Al Fatiha, we are supposed to memorize them, inshallah, and know the meanings of all of the words. So, today we are looking at the second half of Surah Al Fatiha, and we have Ihdina al Sirat al Mustaqim. Ihdina al Sirat al Mustaqim. Ihdina. Ihdina means guide us or show us. Guide us or show us. Ihdina in this specific manner has been mentioned only twice. Only two times in the glorious Quran. But the root word Hada or Al Huda has been mentioned 91 times in the glorious Quran. 91 times the word Huda or Al Huda has been mentioned in the Quran. And Ihdina is a derivative of Al Huda. Ihdi basically is two words. Ihdi means guide or show, and Na means us. So, ihdina, show us or guide us. As-sirat, as-sirat means the path or the way. And as-sirat has been mentioned six times in the Quran with the alif and lam. In Surah Al-Fatiha, the word as-sirat was mentioned twice. You can see without the lam, alif and lam, and with the alif and lam. So in the whole Quran, as-sirat has been mentioned six times, whereas the word without alif lam has been mentioned 45 times. So as-sirat means the way or the path, P-A-T-H, the path. Al-mustaqim, al-mustaqim means the straight, the straight. And Al-Mustaqim has been mentioned five times, whereas without the Alif Lam, it occurred 37 times in the glorious Quran. So 37 plus 5, 42 times um, Al-Mustaqim or Mustaqim together, both of them uh, 42 times in the glorious Quran. Okay, so we have Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. The translation Guide us or show us the straight path or the straight way. Show us the straight way or show us the straight path or guide us to the straight path. All of those are different translations of Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. The next ayah is Al Anamta alayhim Alladina Anamta alayhim. We're taking three words. Alladina means who. And it is plural. The plural, the plural of Alladhi. So Alladina is the plural of Alladhi. It means who. Most of the translations you see those who, but it really means who. And Alladina has been mentioned 879 times in the Quran. Al-Ladhina was mentioned 879 times in the Quran. The next word is An'amta. 
an'amta. An'amta means you have bestowed favor. You, you meaning Allah, have bestowed favor or you have bestowed grace. You have bestowed favor or you have bestowed grace. An'amta. An'amta, just as the same conjugation occurred eight times in the Quran. Eight times. And an'ama, from the verb an'ama, that occurred 18 times. One eight, 18 times. So an'ama is the verb and it occurred 18 times. But an'amta, with that specific conjugation, it occurred only eight times. And the next word, alayhim, alayhim, meaning on them, on them. And that occurred 208 times times in the Quran 208 alayhim 208 times in the Quran so we have alladhina an'amta alayhim alladhina an'amta alayhim those whom you have bestowed your favors on them those on whom you have bestowed your favors on them and we come to the last part of the surah. And it you have غير المغضوب عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم غير means not, N-O-T. It's a negative particle, right? And that word not or غير was mentioned in the Quran one hundred and 51 times in the Quran. 151 times. Ghayri. Al Maghdub. Al Maghdub. In that same way how it is written in Surah Al Fatiha, it occurred no other place in the Quran. Al Maghdub. Alright? And that is something really to think about. Al Maghdub was only mentioned in Surah Al Fatiha. Only once in the whole Quran. And the root word, which is ghadiba, was mentioned 19 times. One, nine. Only 19 times the word ghadiba has been mentioned in the glorious Quran. And what is the meaning of al-maghdub? Al-maghdub means those who have incurred wrath or anger. Those who have incurred wrath or anger from the verb ghadiba, which means to become angry. So al-maghdub refers to the one who has, or those who have incurred wrath and or anger. And the last word, ad-dalin, ad those who have gone astray. The word ad was mentioned only eight times in the glorious Quran, eight times in the glorious Quran Abdalin, those who have gone astray the plural form alright so the last part of the surah غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ not the path of those who earned or incurred your wrath or your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. Abdalin. Alright? So that brings us to the end of the vocab for Suratul Fatiha, inshallah. I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help us all to memorize his book. And also we start with Suratul Fatiha. And inshallah I hope that after you have memorized all of the meanings of the words of Surah Al-Fatiha, that it will not be the end, but it is just the start. And I hope that we would have started from on good grounds. And uh, the attitude of a Muslim is always that he wants to learn more and more, especially of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will make it easy for us. And uh, inshallah, keep viewing our programs, inshallah, because 
there are lots of things that we could learn on this program, Durusun fi al So I thank you very much. Ashkurukum kafiran ala mutalaatikum. Wa ila al isbu al qadim inshaAllah sofa naltaqi. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle? Then worry no more. Visit Eric Alliance on Automotive and Transport Services Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. They do full professional body works using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Alliance Unlimited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town, or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's restaurant Minimat and Poultry Depot, conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street and Southern Main Road, California. At Mali's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays. We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products, including halal chicken and duck. Opening hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Maddie's Restaurant, Minimat and Poultry Depot at 744-1857. Each day we are reminded And each day we say There's not much that we can do It seems so far away So we live our lives in silence Pretending not to hear the voices of our people, the cry is so, so clear. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome brothers and sisters as we continue with Durusun fi al Arabiya. Now we were looking at the imperfect tense conjugation. Now we're going to actually look at the conjugation. We just talked about what is meant by the imperfect tense. And now we want to look at the conjugation. But as I have mentioned, we will not look at the full conjugation because of the amount of um, conjugation it is. So what we have is the singular column, all right? Let me write, first of all, a, a little heading, so at least you could have it. You put um, tasarif, al-fi'l, al-mudari'ah. Tos, re, full, fi, lil, mu, da, re, i. Basically, it means the conjugation of the imperfect tense verb. Conjugation of the imperfect tense verb. Tasriful fi, lil, mudari. Tasriful fi, lil, mudari. Right? So we have the singular column. We have the dual and we have <coughs> the plural. We have a masculine and we have the feminine. And we're looking at the third person conjugation. So all this will be third person. All right? And then we'll have, again, masculine and feminine. And we're looking at the second person. Second person basically means you. And then we have masculine or feminine. First person. 
and the first person is actually the speaker. Okay? So when we talk about the singular masculine third person, basically we are saying he, and this one is she. All of this here is you, right? You masculine singular, and you feminine singular, and this is I. So now, <coughs> if we have the verb vahaba, va, ha, ba, va, ha, ba. This is the verb we want to conjugate. For the verb vahaba, we have an additional letter that comes before as a prefix, and it is a ya. Okay, with a fatha. And then we have the same three letters of the verb, which is the val, and then we have the ha, and we have the ba. Okay. So we have Val, ha, and ba. Va, ha, ba. But now, because it is the imperfect tense conjugation, the vowels are going to change now. So this is what it is going to be now. The first letter of the verb, which had a fatha, is now going to take a sukun. Okay? So the ya is joined to the val. So it becomes yev. Yev. This one, the ha, the fatha remain fatha. And the last one, it changes to a dhamma. So it is yadhabu. Yadhabu. So yadhahaba, dhahaba means he went. Yadhabu means he is going or he goes. So dhahaba means he went. So yadhabu, it is imperfect tense. It means what? He is going or he goes. Or it can also mean he will go. Okay? And I have just explained a while ago how it could mean that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just take this away. I just wrote this here so that we can see that there are other conjugations. One has to come here for the dual form, and next one for the plural. Then we have the dual for feminine, a next conjugation here, and the plural another one here, and one here, and one here, and another one here, and another one here, and we have one here, none here, and then we have one more here, and one more here, and one more here, and one here. See, when you count all of this, you get about 14. All right, 14 different. Let's count and see. One, two, three. Wahid, ithnan, thalatha, arba, khamsa, sitta, sabah, thamania, tissa, ashara, ahada, ashara, ithna, ashara, thalatha, ashara, arba, ata, ashara, arba, ata, ashara. 14 different conjugation for the whole conjugation. So today we are not going to look at the dual nor the plural. So I'm going to take this away now. I need some space to do some further explanation. Okay, so I am taking it away. So now, <coughs> we have yadhabu. So yadhabu means, could mean three things. It could mean he goes. It can also mean he is going. And it could also mean, he will go. Three. Yadhabu. Could mean any one of these. So what is going to differentiate this meaning from this one from this one? These are the helping words. So if I say, for example, after I have written Yadhabu, right? 
And after the verb yadhabu, I must remember, after the verb yadhabu, we have to always put this preposition, ila. Ila. And ila means to. Right? Ila. To. T O. To. So anytime you use the verb vahaba, you must use ila after it. So you want to say, he, is, he goes. So you say, yadhabu ila, wherever he goes to. Okay? And then you say, kulla yawm. So kulla yawm means every day. So he goes to, let's say, ilal masjid. Kulla yawm. So he goes to masjid kulla yadhabu ilal masjid kulla yawm. Okay, that's right in the word masjid. Al masjid kulla yawm. Yadhabu ilal masjidi kulla yawm. He goes, he goes to the masjid every day. If we want to say now he is going to the masjid now, it is the same conjugation, yadhabu ila al masjid al an. So this here, al an and kulla yawm, are the words that help to decipher, to determine whether it means goes or going and will go. All right, yadhabu, all right, for yadhabu, we will put these words, saufa, or we can put the scene, attach it to this. So it, this is what it is going to look like. So it's going to look like sa yadh sa yadh. Habu. All right, Sayyad Habu ilal Masjid. So if I say Sayyad Habu ilal Masjid, it means he will go to the Masjid. So if I want to indicate the future tense, I have to put in the scene. And notice how the scene is attached to the verb. If I don't want to use the scene, I can use this word, Saufa. So I have a choice. Either say, Sawfa yadhabu ilal masjid, or I could say, Sayadhabu ilal masjid. Alright? So basically, the conjugation of the imperfect tense verb would have these different meanings. Alright? The simple present tense, the present continuous tense, or the future tense. All of this, only one conjugation. How am I going to know the difference between all of them? Or amongst them, it is words like, Kullu yawm, kullu usbu, kullu shahar, kullu sana, kullu sa'a, kullu daqiqa, every minute, every second, right? Kullu thaniya, and so on. If I say al-an, meaning now, it is going, it's because continuity, and sawfa. So it's very easy, all right? It's very simple. So we finish with yadhabu means he, all right? We want to know how we say she. Well, just to show the difference between he and she, instead of adding a ya, a ta is now added. All right? And then we have the letters of the verb, which, is, which are dal, ha, and ba. Okay? And the vowel, the voweling of the verb remains the same. Tad. Ha, bu. Tadhabu means she is going, she goes, or she will go. All right, and you use the same words again. So, differentiating between the masculine and the feminine is that the masculine has a ya, the feminine has ta. And as long as you could differentiate between these two letters, you would know the conjugation. 
All right? And noting, of course, what I have just mentioned a while ago, that the first letter of the verb, all right, takes a sukun now. Takes a sukun. So, tav, ha, bu. All right? The fatha change to adamma. The second letter normally could have different vowel. It could have a fatha sometimes. In some cases, it may have a kasra. And in other cases, it may even have a dhamma. All right? It is all dependent on the verb. And there is no way actually to know when it will take a kasra or when it will have a fatha or when it will have a kasra or a dhamma. There is no way to know that. You have to just memorize um, the word like that. So that is for the third person singular, okay? Now we're moving on now to the second person, which is you. Supposing you're addressing, you're talking to someone, and that person is a male person, all right? Now look at this. It is ta, all right? And this is the same and exact Exact thing like this one. Tav habu, same thing. Tav ha bu. Exactly. So there is no difference between this one and this one. This one means you. All right. So now somebody might be asking how it is that I am going to be able to differentiate between. She and you, all right? How am I going to be able to differentiate between she and you? Well, it is very easy because you, remember you, the person is speaking to you, so you are in front. The person is addressing you, she's talking to you, all right? Whereas the third person is she, which is absent. The person is not there, you're talking about the person. So there can't be any confusion between you and she. There will be no confusion between the two. It is the context in which the word is used, the person will be able to, to know, and there can be no confusion in that. All right? There will be no confusion in whether it is you or she. Okay? So it is tavhabu. So the two of them are identical in the conjugation. Tavhabu. That is for masculine. So masculine is tavhabu, the same as feminine. This is third person, this one is second person. Second person is all the time you, okay? So now we're going to move on to the feminine. And the feminine has two additions. One is a prefix. So we have the verb here, the letters of the verb. Tav, hab. All right, these are the three letters. I wrote the bar halfway because there are some other letters to be written. And you have a ya yeah, and then noon. Okay, so it is tav ha and then it has a sukun here. It's a kesra fatha. So it's tav habina. Tav habina. So what really happened here now for tav habina? We have a prefix and we have a suffix. The Dhamma from the Ba was changed to a, a Kesra because an additional Ya was added to the verb and a Noon. And the Ya carried a Sukun. So because of this additional Ya with the Sukun, it changed the Dhamma and forced the Dhamma to become a Ya. All right? Because you cannot pronounce a word with the Dhamma and the Ya. Right? Yasakina. It cannot be pronounced. And it will be heavy, very difficult to be pronounced on the tongue. All right? So it's tavhabina. So basically what you will have to remember is what are the additional letters that you must add to the verb to make it the imperfect tense. So tavhabina. All right? So a person could ask you, Aina tavhabina. Where are you going? So you're talking to a female now. If you're talking to a female, you have to say tavhabina. Tavhabina. If you're speaking to a male, you have to just say tavhabu. Tavhab. 
tavhabu or tavhab. Okay? Now, if you're speaking to a female, you should not say tavhab. Aina tavhab. And you're talking to a female. All right? That is a big mistake. Okay? Because you would make the person become uh, a male, right? And likewise, the opposite is also the same thing. You can't be addressing um, a male person and saying, Aina tavhabin. Okay? You can't do that. Okay? So, and the last one we have here is Aleph with a Hamza on top. And then we have the letters again, the Dal, the Ha, and the Ba. You must write back the letters of the verb, right? All the letters of the verb. It's just the voweling changes. Av, Ha, Bu. Av, Ha, Bu. I am going, or I go, or I will go. All right? The three things you have to remember. Simple present tense, present continuous tense, or the future tense. Adhabu. Adhabu, or you could just end it with adhab. The Arabs normally, as I have mentioned in many, many programs, that the last vowel of the verb, it is ignored. It is there, but it is normally ignored. All right? So... This is the conjugation. I would like, inshallah, for you to pay special attention to the conjugation. Remember what are the prefix. Now, the prefix, each one is for a specific uh, pronoun. So you have to remember which one is for which. For the feminine one, all right, it has prefix and it also has the suffix. And for the first person, it doesn't matter if it is a male person who is speaking or a female person who is speaking. As long as the person that's first person, I, it means I, all right? This one is I. Whether male or female, it's adhab. So a boy will say, I am going, adhab. A sister will say, adhab. Same thing, adhab, all right? So, yadhabu, tadhabu, tadhabu, the two of them are the same. Tadhabina, adhabu. Now I'm going to end it with a sukun. Yadhab, tadhab, tadhab, tadhabin, adhab. All right? That is the conjugation for the singular column, inshallah. Make sure, inshallah, that you try to learn them. And inshallah, for the next episode, inshallah, we will be looking at the remaining of uh, the conjugation. All right? So, inshallah, don't go too far because we still have the... Arabic conversation that is going to come on, um, inshallah, just after the break. All right, so Jazakumullah Khairan, Shukran, Wassalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. Got into an accident or just need to repair your vehicle? Then worry no more. Visit Eric Alliance on Automotive and Transport Services Limited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. They do full professional body works using the latest and best equipment necessary to get the job done right. They also offer transport services. So visit Eric Alliance Unlimited, number 141 Craignish Road, Princess Town. Or call 620-2873 or 655-2873. Mali's Restaurant Minimart and Poultry Depot. Conveniently located at the corner of Juman Street on Southern Main Road, California. At Maddie's, we specialize in mouth-watering curry foods from Monday to Thursday and barbecue on Fridays and Saturdays. We also have the best prices in dry goods and poultry products, including halal chicken and duck. Open hours every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Contact Maddie's Restaurant Minimat and Poultry Depot at 744-1857. <laughs>
Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Eid Mubarak. Kullu aam wa antum bi khair. Min al aideen, inshallah. Kayfa haluk ya sadiqi? Wallahi bi khair. Wallahi bi khair. Matha satafal al yom? Al yom saadhabu ila bayti ammi, inshallah. Wa ayna baytu ammik? بيته قريب من بيت خالتي وأين بيت خالتك؟ بيتها قريب من بيت صديقي يا أخي أين بيت عمك وبيت خالتك وبيت صديقك؟ بيوتهم قريبة من المستشفى العام في بورتوف إسبين هل تذهب إلى بيت خالتك وبيت صديقك اليوم أيضا؟ لا خالتي ستذهب إلى بيت عمي وأنا سأذهب معها وأنت أين ستذهب اليوم؟ سوف أذهب مع زوجتي وابني وبنتي إلى بيت زميلة زوجتي من زميلة زوجتك؟ وأين بيتها؟ زميلة زوجتي هي اسمها شامينة علي وبيتها في سنت أغسطين هل تذهب للغداء؟ نعم وأين ستذهب أنت للغداء؟ لا أذهب إلى بيت أحد سأتناول الغداء مع أسرتي في بيتي فمتى ستذهب إلى بيت عمك؟ سوف أذهب إلى بيته للعشاء طيب يا أخي عندي فراغ بعد المغرب هل يمكن أن أذهب معكم؟ أذهب <تصفيق> ما ماذا قلت؟ ما فهمتك؟ ماذا قلت؟ لا 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 شيء لا شيء اهلا وسهلا طيب شكرا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله <تصفيق>